Hi there and welcome into this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing how we can make the previous companion that we have made into a very dynamic companion where you are able to give specific commands to it. So right now it is the base commands to follow and wait here, but you can implement this inside this system in a very dynamic way. So as you can see over here, I can make now our character to follow. I can select this, uh, this command to him. And we're going to start following our character just like so. And I can make it wait again by just selecting the function to wait here. And so it's going to work just like before. In order to create our dynamic behavior for our companion, I'm going to be using this companion that we have created in this genome. So right now it's in the third person template. I have this option to interact with it. And it's going to start following our character and I just can make him stop following as well. So I'm going to be building on top of that. Um, if you don't know how to create a companion, you don't have that yet, please check this out on the channel. And on top of that, I am going to be getting, uh, so from our companion interface, so that's basically the communication between our companion and the character. So that's where I have set functions, so to know when is able to interact and when to start following as well. So right now I have this call interaction inside our VP companion that's going to basically, actually it should be going into our third person. Let's just get to it. Blueprint, BP third person. And should be this event call interaction over here. And as you can see, start the widget, uh, get the reference for our companion and things like that. Please check this out on the channel. It's a pretty good video. And next, to make this a little bit different, I'm going to be splitting into sections. So right now, I'm able to either start following or or uh, or stop following, and that's basically it. What I'm going to do is to create a widget where it's going to be displaying for me options when I start this interaction. So to do that, I am going into our our content and then companion over here. I have this Y interact widget. I'm going to be create a new one. So just right click, then select. I uh, go to user interface, select widget blueprint, get a user widget, and this one is going to be our Y underscore. Let's say uh, decision. Open this up. Place it here from our palette. Get a canvas panel place inside of here and then over here let's get a container uh should be container box i forgot how it was called so yeah i think i'm going to be getting this horizontal box over here uh no instead i'm going to be using the vertical box i think it's going to be the best option so that i can display this and then in our vertical box i'm going to be placing this anchor for the middle and the position at zero and zero size to contact and yeah that should be good then i'm going to be getting a button place inside the vertical box then i'm going to also be getting a text place inside the vertical box as well now i'm going to get this button and text and i'm going to be copy and pasting it multiple times three times should be exact uh, so this one is going to be our button let's say to follow underscore button the next button is to stop following and then the next button is actually let's just set uh stop follow underscore button and the last button i think yeah i'm not sure if i'm going to be using this one if i have time yet for now just leave it blank and then I am going to be getting from this button. Let's just make it on event, get event on, click it. And here from our stop follow, get the event on, click it as well. So I'm going to be setting the text there now. So here in our follow button, let's get the text and let's just say follow. And for the other one, uh, let's just get a little bit closer. And for the other one, uh, for the stop follow, let's just say um wait here like that and that should be good let's just align the justification there here as well should be good uh let me see how 
this would look like in the game. I think it would look fine. Uh, so now let's just compile this, save it. And basically, I think once I have pressed that key, I think I'm going to be destroying the other widget that was this one over here. I'm going to be destroying this widget and I'm going to be calling this widget over here. So let's go to our pre third person character. That's the one that I'm using for this. Uh, as you can see here, I have this start interaction is going to be defining our widget. And I have a reference for this widget that's basically this Y interact. I mainly what I'm going to be doing is that I have this event follow right now. It is working like this. It's going to be toggling this on or off. Instead, I'm going to be doing things a little bit different. So, uh, if I press this key and he is able to interact with our character, what I'm going to be doing is first I am going to destroy this widget. So let's just get our Y interact. And I'm going to get removed from parent. Like that. And then I'm going to create a widget. Create a widget. Actually, I'm going to need quite a bit of space. So let's place this to our right. And then later on, I place it back here. So, and then I am going to be promoting this to a variable. This one is our y underscore interact like that. Yeah, actually it's not y interact. It is our y underscore decision. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to be adding this to viewport. And then let me see. Yeah, I need to place that y decision there. Like so. Yeah, that should be good. Now we need to disable the rotation of our character during this menu and also display the mouse cursor so that he can select what he wants to do. To do that, let's get our player controller. And then for our player controller, let's just get set show mouse cursor. Let's make it through over here. And then to disable the rotation, I am going to just get from this, let's say ignore it. Look input set ignore look input this one over here set it to true as well place it here and it should be good get a root node down here and yeah that should be good so now if we're going our game and I compile this and save it if I go close I'm going to be seeing that a widget and I'm able to select follow or wait our text block there. I don't think there is going to be time to implement a new logic for this, so I'm going to only be showing how you can implement uh, this widget so that you can make uh, further logic for your companion to do specific tasks and things like that. So, uh, then let's do that. So let's go back into our, our wide decision. I'm going to be removing this one. Let's just keep with follow and wait here. Uh, now, in our BP third person, the way that I'm thinking to change this logic is to now in our right decision, uh, here in our graph right now, in our, let's say, the follow button, I'm going to be calling an event in our BP third person uh, to set that on the companion itself because I need the reference for the current companion. So for that reason, it needs to be set in our BP third person character or the character that we are currently using so that I'm able to change this. So let me see. I think here, yeah, I could implement an interface in our Y interact and I think that could be done. But since this is just an event to, let's say, it's going to happen only once, I think I'm not going to be using interface. I'm going to only be using a cast. So here in our graph, uh, in our Y decision, I am going to, from our on click it follow button, I'm going to get player character, and then I am going to cast to BP third person, uh, actually not companion, cast to BP third person character, like that. Yeah, that should be good. Now, from this, I am going to be getting, I'm going to be creating an event there in our BP third person. That is, let's just get custom event. Follow, let's say, companion. Follow. Like so. 
And basically what this is going to do is that I'm going to be getting this follow event and I don't think I need this already follow anymore. So I'm going to only be getting this and placing it to here. And then for the other one, that is another custom event. Let's say to wait. Actually a companion wait like that is going to be the same thing as here. Uh, actually this one is to set to true and this one is to set it to false. Just like that. I'm going to be deleting this because I don't need it anymore and I don't need this variable anymore as well. Just compile this, save it and there is a little bit of extra logic that I need to do as well. I need to disable to make this widget be broken as well and to make this appear for me. So for that, I have this wide decision. The first thing that I'm going to do for any case over here is to disable that. So let's just get our wide decision and I'm going to get remove from parent. Place into here and that's go for both of them just like that. And the, the external logic is that I'm going to be copying this up. Place into here. Like so. This time I'm going to be disable our mouse cursor and the new looking put. Compile it, save it. And it should be good. Should be good. Our character is still going to be able to interact. Uh, actually, since I have this, uh, I have the event to know to disable this interaction. I think it is, let me take a look, should be being set. Yeah, so here every time the event car interaction is called, it is going to be updating the interact. And in RBP companion, this is going to be called on the end of our lab as well. So making this turn off and turning off in our BP third person character. So one thing that I could do is to make this widget for interaction to appear again. And I think I'm going to be doing that. So let's just get this thing over here. And I think I'm going to be doing it over here. Actually, first thing is that I'm going to check if it should be able to interact. So get a branch over here. If it is able it for to interact, then I'm going to be displaying this again. If it is not, then it's going to be broken. It. That's, that's mainly it, not going to do anything. Uh, and yeah, that should be good. Uh, let me just take a look if I am forgetting something and I don't think I am. Let's just compile it, save it. Uh, yeah, there is one thing. I need to set the function to stop following as well and for the following as well. I have not set that yet. So I have this follow. I am going to get it over here. So get follow. Make it on and uh, not that one. Let me take a look. Yeah, I think I got the message to follow. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, for, sorry about that. I want this over here, this custom event. Companion follow. So delete that, get companion underscore follow, like that. And then down here, let's just copy this, paste it here. But instead, I am going to get a uh, companion wait. Let's get it to here, break this node, break open links like that. Compile, save it, and now should be working fine. Let me test this on the game, save everything. So if I go close to our character, if I press the key now, it's not going to start following our character, but I should be seeing this. Uh, and if I press the follow key, it's going to start following our character, just like that. I'm able to move again. If I interact with it again and I make it right here, it should be, yeah, there is a small problem with the widget. I think it's checking, yeah, I think it's because it's, have, it's been displayed two times this interact. The main reason for that is just because I got a little bit away where there was another widget open and I got uh, back. So I think here, in our third person, I have this event interaction. I'm going to be making one more thing. I'm going to check if our wide decision is open before following with anything over here. So actually I need to follow with this, this parts I need to follow. 
and then I am going, but before this, I'm going to set this interaction, but before this, I'm going to have another range for this. So here in our, let's see, I think it was here, event follow, create the Y widget. I am going, once this is created, I am going to be creating another variable that is, let's say, this for decision making, decision, boolean, and I'm going to be setting it to true right here. Let's get a bit more space over here. Let's set it to true here, like so. And yeah, that should be good here. Decision should be good here. I need to set that back to false. So once, yeah, I'm going to be setting it over here. So decision, set it back to false over here. And yeah, now let's go into here. And before this branch, I'm going to be create another one. Uh, actually, I don't need to make another one. I think I'm going to just get the decision over here and I'm going to get a not boolean. And from this, I'm going to get an end boolean. So that this should be true and this should not be true. Then it's going to trace condition, compile, save it. And should be good, should be working fine. So if I go close to our character now, I press that key. If I go away, it's not going to be displaying that, even if I get closer again. But still going to be setting if I am able to interact with it or not. Then if I press the following key, he is going to start chasing our character. This switch has appeared again because I'm still close to our character. But then if I, let's say if I press a key again and I make it wait here, it's going to wait, I go away, it's going to disappear. Just like that. So that's mainly what I want to show you. Now you can go to this wide decision and you can make new logic. Let's say if you want to create specific functions for our, your character, you know how to implement this in this inside of, of this system uh, in a very dynamic way. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Visit train.memetinteract.com and enroll in this course to get all source files. Use coupon code MEMITY to enroll for free.